I'm, I'm on this stinking limb. It's gonna bust out from underneath me. That's gonna be uncomfortable. All right, we are here, the village McFarland on the uh, Ho-Chunk effigy mounds. Uh, there's a whole series of mounds in the village and you can see the mound is right here. I'm at the top of it. We've got all these mats set up. We've got this dead, very dead, white oak. Uh, and they're, you know, of course, afraid of it falling over one day and, and tearing up the mound. So we want to make a stump out of it like that one. And yeah, you could set up pads and fall it, but we're just, we got a couple of lines. We put the retrievable Norm Hall retrievable double ring slings up there in that one. We got retrievable double ring slings up in that walnut. And we're gonna suspend pieces between the two rigs and then just lower them right out here. Uh, 15 feet off the edge of the mound is the protection zone. So we're gonna try to lower them outside the protection zone. And then we've got the mat set up right here just in case we get shrapnel that breaks loose. And that's a walking path right there. That's kind of within the, the protection zone, but it's, you know, so that's compacted. We're trying to protect the mounds themselves. We're gonna have some fun. So we got two, two rigging ropes. I've got a couple of slings. We have done quite a bit of work on these mounds over the years. There's a whole series on the other side of the water tower. There's a whole bunch of animal figures on a hillside or straight north of here. There's uh, another mound hill. And we, we did a lot of clearance back there. This is the first time we've been back since under new management at the city here. So um, we're looking forward to fulfilling on this job. I'm gonna shut you guys off. You guys like <laughs> interrupting everything. Goodbye. I got my speakers on the outside of my helmet. Oh. That's nice for picking up the crew, but then you know when I'm when I'm talking, it's just a bunch of noisy kids. So just in case the guys are making too much noise when I was talking about all that stuff, um, yeah, we've done quite a bit of work in the village on the mounts. So there's, you know, always work that can be done. We had phase three we never got to before the village administrator retired. And so there's still, you know, it's funny, years and years and years ago, when we first got our first job, there was, I had to, I was called into a village meeting and you know, there's all this political uproar about cutting down trees on, you know, the water tower hill. And, you know, every box elder was precious at that time, you know, to somebody. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, historically, the Ho-Chunk had this deforested when they made these mounds. I mean, they didn't have trees when they were digging dirt and building these mounds. They they cleared the trees. So that, that, that bur oak right there, you know, wasn't there when this was built. So if you're looking historically, that should go. And that was in phase three. We never got to phase three because somebody argues for that tree. But that tree is not that old, <laughs> you know, and it's not old compared to these mounds. So all the trees on this hill are new since these mounds were here. So, you know, if you're trying to restore history or preserve history, you know, the mound is, you know, was here first. All right. This, we're not gonna rig this little guy. That's why we have the mats. All right. The lanyard shorter.
I can toss that all the way out there. Okay. Yeah, that's outside the zone. Let's try our first rig. Well, this is going to be fairly light. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on. All right. Uh, you lower it out. Uh, Coming at you. <clears throat> ah. Oh, look at that. Of course, I didn't excavate the root flares on this tree <laughs> because that would kind of defeat the purpose. But that's one of the methods of climbing a dead tree is to excavate the root flares. I feel like I need to leave the lower ones on. I can feel this thing moving. So like, this one and this one are my like ballast to control the harmonics and we'll uh, this little one down here I think I'll just take off <sighs> this is one boring job There is no small amount <laughs> of tedious setup getting these two retrievables set with other trees in the way and that basswood was just a pain in the tail. Just lower out, Austin. It's too light. Uh, I'm just kind of making all my movements really slow and deliberate. Okay, that's gotta be under my climbing line. <laughs> gotta remember that. Now what's nice about this double rope rigging is that we're we're not rigging on the tree okay Austin uh, you're gonna you're gonna let it you're gonna let it run Mike you're gonna pull it as tight as you can okay it's I'm gonna tip it off this way so any shrapnel probably gets thrown out there and you're gonna let it run so that it it just falls over there. Mike, something's coming flying at yeah, you. <laughs> Junk behind that branch. We'll lose a little shrapnel off of this. All right, oh, we got the wind in play. Okay. Point up here, so Austin's gonna let it run. 
wasn't exactly running. Did it not take it? It didn't take it. I mean, I had a belly in the rope and everything. You could maybe just have a hand rig on that side. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll check and adjust that. We got a little friction at the rings. And yeah, that's probably too much friction on a little rope. So yeah, you're probably good because we just kind of want to let you just let her go. Because we got the height. When we get closer to the ground on the chunks, you'll need to take a wrap. So our precautions of the mats right in that area, we caught that shrapnel. Now somehow I gotta tiptoe up here. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get this out of the way. Yeah, we better get this out of the way. Oh, two in a row, good job. So we are here at an Indian effigy mound. So anybody wondering, why are you being so precautious? Send that thing. Yeah, well, you know, we can't send it. It is what it is. So what do you do when you can't send it? You do this. Now we've got two of the Norm Hall retrieva retrievable double ring slings in play here. One over there and one up there. Now something to keep in mind there is that, you know, that multiplies the force. If we got a hundred pound piece here, we've got 50 pounds on that rope, 50 pounds on that rope. But there's also 50 pounds on the rig, if he's holding it all. So you got 50 and 50 is 100 pounds up there, but, that's tied to the base. So you got 100 pounds up there being held by 100 pounds. So you got 200 pounds of force on the limb up there. <laughs> Did you follow that? <laughs> it's quite confusing, but trust me, it four times the weight of the rig. Uh, but we're cutting the weight of the rig in half with two rigging ropes and austin you're just gonna let this run again if we if we bang into that hackberry it's it's no big deal oh that's nice yeah that's all you need is a handhold don't you so we're not putting any pressure on Austin's side. But yeah, these Norm Hall retrievable double ring slings are a great tool, but you have to remember that you're compounding the force at that rigging point. So once again, if you got 50 pounds on this line, there's 50 pounds holding it. That's 100 pounds at the rings which are being held by the other side, which is 100 pounds. 100 and 100 is 200 pounds at the crotch. So I'm not on a very big thing there. So we don't want to just go heavyweight in that, that point. We got a little beefier stock over at the uh, Walnut, but we have that same system set up there. I'm up a little higher. Oh! Actually step back farther and then pull harder. You got to back up towards Mike. There we go. Man. I want to be as straight up and down on this bad boy as I can be. All right, that's problematic. Okay, Austin's rigging line always has to come under mine. Okay, this one's gonna look a little, little messy. Silky time. 
gently. Okay, Mike, set that up for a lift. Okay, hold it there, because you don't want to do anything but break the hinge. I'm going to angle it right towards that hackberry. Uh, Austin, you're, you're going to have slack. Pull yours up a little tight, but, but just leave it right like that. You're going to have slack, and then just sort of try to slow it down with your gloves. This will be exciting. Okay, crank it right off there. Go hard and fast. Keep cranking. Nice. It's not that heavy. That was nice. No shrapnel, even on the trail. So there's a GRCS down there. So we were able to tension that. Now, of course, I'm in a dead tree. And I actually left a fair amount of hinge there. I thought I had that, I was watching this side, but I, you know, I, I have a tendency to overcut this side. So you, I was kind of gun shy there, but it pulled off. I didn't want to, you know, have too much pulling force on this tree, obviously. I don't want to, you want to hinge the top and you end up pulling the whole tree over. That would be disconcerting. Um, so, now I left these on here for ballast. So that actually helped stabilize this trunk to have these here as that came off. Now what's great is that none of the rigging is on this tree. So when that came off, I was just, there was no wobble. So there's just very little impact as that left us. <laughs> now if we had two GRCSs, we could pull that one to that side and then Mike can slow it down. I might set it up the other way. I might just pull that up tight. We might rig that that way. Um, it's definitely less to worry about. And then Mike can slow it down. I think we will. Oh, let the good times roll. All right, I probably want to get these up in there. Against my, oh, I'm pulling that whole tree. I don't have. I'm up high enough in that hackberry. It wants to, it wants to lean into me. I don't want to be on this dead limb too hard. And I don't want to fall off that way. Holy mackerel. Get yourself balanced. None of my tying points here are giving me a very good stability. I want to be up there higher. Don't, don't make this baby break. I'm, I'm on this stinking limb. It's gonna bust out from underneath me. That's gonna be uncomfortable. But I want this. It's fairly light up here, I'm sure. So I can take a little heavier, heavier butt, but that's all the higher I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna go over the top so that chokes it back. Okay, pull that up tight. You're the holder this time. Make sure his line comes under mine. And I could, I could put Mike's lower so that it holds some of the butt weight. Okay, uh, you, you wanna put it in there and lock it off and then Get your head out of the way, because that's going to bust when it gets over there. Pull it up all the way straight up. Get it nice and tight as tight as you can get it. And then if you just want to back up with the rope, back up out of the way. Or yeah, put a half hitch on there and just walk away. Mike, you want to just let her go. Probably a hand rig. You don't need to really hold it at all now that Austin's out of there. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, I could have could have sent this whole piece. It's very light. It's mu much lighter than I am anticipating. There's zero water in this thing. But I got pretty good wood integrity, so I wasn't going to break that standing on it. It just has to be off the mound. Just just bring it right over there. Just leave it right there. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I feel so much better now. <laughs> Like, where are you guys going with that? Just get her on the ground. I know, they're just going to take it away. They don't care where it goes. Like he says, don't spend time moving it. Those city boys need something to do, don't they? Mike was a county, county highway guy for 21 years. Seven months. So... We, we make municipal jokes once in a while around here. Thank you. Okay, Austin, pull it up. But you're gonna kind of let her, let her run, Austin. Why don't you crank her off of there so all the tension's out of there. It'll just come right at you. And then you can step behind that tree and protect yourself. Wow, not a single piece of that broke off. That's crazy. I thought for sure that would just all fracture. That white oak is so sturdy. All right, well, we got the shrapnel stuff all taken care of. Well, we're almost done all the setup here. It's coming apart pretty nicely. I thought we were gonna have more shrapnel. That's why I put all the mats out. The bark, the bark's pretty heavy dropping, but the plan came together nicely. Yeah, you should take the one little wrap. Uh, although, you know, you really don't have to control it. It should just let her let her go in your hands, because you've you've got the weaker tie-in point, so <laughs> we don't want to pressure too much wood. But this won't be too heavy. We probably got you know 150 pounds. They're smiling, going, yeah, you are gonna break that. Yeah, let, let yours run faster. You're, sw you're swinging the top of your tree pretty good. On these pieces of wood, you can let yours go. As we get lower, I'll have to take shorter pieces of wood. Okay, pull her up tight. Why don't you uh, set it up for a lift so you can pull it off of there for me. So I don't have to work so hard. Yeah, yeah. If I wouldn't, if I wouldn't cut into a branch stub, <laughs> like I did on this last one. Same thing, Kevin. Yeah, but it's just gonna rest against my rope there, so. I forgot that I asked him to crank that. Should have been cutting that a little differently. Okay, I'm feeling a little safer now. Except, you know, I don't have any ballast on this trunk now, so all this wobble in this trunk. If, if my root system is gone, but I don't, I don't see the roots moving at all, so. I'm fairly confident about the roots. That's Mike's lemon saw there. 592 XP. Yeah, set that up for a lift, Mike. I'll cut it. Okay, pull it up tight, Austin. 
Okay, Austin, you'll let it run. You're just sort of slowing it down. Nice. So we've got, you know, it's kind of a co-dominant stem right there on that basswood, but kind of the whole tree is swaying quite a bit. So we're not putting a lot of force right on that crotch. We've got a lot of give below it. And Austin's just letting it run out. So now I cut backwards around here and notice how it throws sawdust into the kerf. So that's a little method I often use if I don't want the, the stump to set on my saw, is I cut backwards and then fill, especially if your bar isn't quite as long as the piece is wide, uh, then it, it drops all that sawdust right in here. And, and so he was pulling, so we didn't have a potential, but if that was something I was gonna then push off, I could have cut all the way around like that, pulled my saw out, put it away, and then pushed the piece off. Because it would be sitting right on that sawdust. Get my lanyard out from underneath that. Okay, you can pull it up, Mike. Now you, you set these chokes up so that there's very little bend ratio here. And that, that's a better angle, not that we're lifting any kind of major amount of weight here but I just mentioned it for the principle <laughs> um yeah we might as well stick with that method then we don't get any drop it's it will probably have to do that all the way down because as we get closer as we get really close I can hand you pieces <laughs> Make one more cut, I'll be fine, then we'll get it. Okay, pull that up tight. All right. The last one I did without a notch, but this one I'm gonna make a notch. A plunge cut with the attack corner of the bar but I got all the way out here so that it can't kick back and then you get wood in front of it before you do the plunge so now I've got wood in front of the kickback and then you plunge in and you get all the way in there anyways just a little method but not for homeowners Jacob Rogers was trying to demonstrate a gaff out one time, like trying to gaff out. <laughs> and I'll tell you what happens here on the gaff out. When you, well, on this, it simply is bad sapwood. 
but when your foot turns in and your toe your toe leverages it out so you want to stay dove toed and like I'm moving around the tree and then my toe comes into the tree and boom almost lost my camera there you know so you're coming around the tree and then my my toe pulls it out so it's on the move so when I move I want to get this foot in first and then move this one be but I was I was wrapping around and then I pull it out so don't let your toes come in contact with the trunk especially when you're you're inching your way around the trunk be cognizant of your toes my shin muscle is just cramping try to get some blood in there can you kick that piece of what's that Oh. oh, the other side, other way direction. Yeah, there you go. Gotta love that. Get this hooked on first. Get your saw safe. And then take this one off. So yeah, I'm always fussy. I want, I want this put on right to left. Because then I spin it around and I hook it. It's just the way I do it. You know, years and years, it's the way it is. You gotta do it my way. You don't have to, but you know. I like you better if you do. Okay. Let's get this done. <laughs> What's that? That one that you ripped out yesterday? Yeah? That's the one I replaced on Friday. Uh, are you kidding me? No, Man, I was being I was being so good to that thing. I was like getting tension on it before I pulled. Everything. These 562s, they have a fatal flaw. And that is the, the recoil. Ugh. That's why we put that down there. Shrapnel. As we're making this, this is my last week before going to Guatemala. I'm probably back by the time you're watching this. Probably edited this video on the airplane. So any purchases you make at GameOfTrees.com help support that project. So one of the reasons I'm staying in shape <laughs> is to continue to do that project. We're working on the professor I work with, Jorge Mario, and another friend of mine, David Mendieta. They're, they're basically my contemporaries. Jorge Mario is a few years younger than me, but he's got like seven to 10 years left or something like that. So we're trying to raise up some future scientists to possibly get involved you know through the university of san carlos so they've got the the clout of the university behind them it, it's very helpful in the country i remember uh coming in and <laughs> uh, with jacob and we had five bags each in the luggage and 
it looks, you know, they're all like like military duffel bags, you know. It looks like we're a couple of mercenaries coming through the airport. And I said, oh, we're here on a project in the Paten district. That's a, a district of Guatemala. They're divided up into like kind of like states. And, uh, you know, with the University of San Carlos. Man, that was that was it, you know? Okay, great. Thank you very much, have fun in the forest. And so it, it's very helpful to have the support of the institution. But we're gonna need, you know, some faculty member that is able to carry on this program. We've maintained control of the equipment in the program. It's kind of a unique thing. You know, it's a state state run or state class, right? It's a certified accredited course at the university. But the equipment is technically in in you know my private control so and that that protects it <laughs> it would not be where it is today if it was allowed to be checked out let's just put it that way Okay, I think we got room for for one more. We can stay off the ground with it. But on this last one, you'll probably have to crank, crank, crank all the way through and keep cranking. And uh, Austin, you might just hold this next one a little bit. Make sure we're gonna be above the ground. So on that last point, I'm not saying anything necessarily derogatory <laughs> about institutional structure but it's the same way in the United States and everywhere you know you got little interdepartmental rivalries and you know several times you know the equipment was requested but it's like no this is for a specific project and uh you know there's there's accountability involved and so you know the people involved have been able to maintain uh integrity on this equipment and it's in really great shape we're bringing down some replacement saddles they have saddles that are over 20 years old master saddles old buckingham master saddles so that's a tribute to buckingham i might have to bring one of those back and have it for a relic and i'll i'll do a little something on it but um, we're bringing down some camp saddles and uh august Haneke, friend of mine i consider uh i reached out to him and he uh Gave me a preferred pricing on a couple of original monkey beaver saddles. And uh, that was that's just a great great thing that I'm very grateful for. Oh, I should have been around the other way. I wasn't thinking. Come all the way around. There we go. And uh and he customized them you know so they he made up a couple of them special with some colors and his monkey his monkey is basically a howler monkey that's what we see out in guatemala all the time is howler monkeys and so they don't have beavers down in <laughs> guatemala but that's okay oh mercy 
I'm gonna be glad to be off this spar. So very grateful to August Hungy and monkeybeaver.com for their gracious contribution. And also All Gear uh, gave me preferred pricing. I, we're a distributor for All Gear, which has now been acquired by RBI Corporation out of the East Coast, Virginia. And so the good news is uh, GameWithTrees.com is going to be able to start carrying, you know, full full line of Arborist equipment. But the existence of the company Game of Trees is to support this Guatemala project. All right. We stay off the ground keep it up keep it up drop it drop it drop it drop it there you go good deal all right I'll just cut little white ones and hand them to you okay. oh one more gaff out oh that's ah, crazy Let's get back around there. Come on. Could pull my saw out of there so you save the last little bit to cut backwards cut most of it with the leverage of the saw and then cut your last little bit backwards all right game of trees we're having fun always remember to pull your retrievable double ring slings out correctly don't leave the rings up there pull them down with your rope and then Pull the rope out of the sling. Then pull the sling out of the tree. All right. Well, here we are on the top of a snake effigy mound. And we safely and effectively took down this tree. We put the mats out. Look at the bark. It all fell right on the mats. So that's good. And uh, everything went over there. The plan unfolded perfectly. We employed two retrievable double ring slings, the Norm Hall. We're, we donated one of those to the Pennsylvania chapter for their climbing competition. It's going to be the uh, winning prize in the work climb. So any of you from Pennsylvania listening, you have that to look forward to. Game of Trees is a sponsor of the Pennsylvania chapter TCC. So... Uh, yeah, I think we're sending out uh, some of our towels that we had. Um, 
they have our old logo on there the one that hbo made us discontinue <laughs> with the parody on the font they didn't like us running off their parody which is just as well we got a nice little twig font made up now so um yeah so these retrievable double ring slings uh attributed to norm hall because he basically thought this concept up back in the day when he thought up the porter wrap and so we're gonna be uh designing one without the rings with just a a spliced eye for it's gonna be heavier either three quarter or seven ace uh with the same uh 12 strand husky 2 rope and that 12 strand that's the right application for this because you don't want to use double braid in this application it could fail uh, so we have this construction of rope somebody asked me one time why do you have this rope? it's so expensive well, it's the right rope you know it is what it is you got four times the force that can work against that you want the right rope so this is a five ace and you know for for secondary lines like this where we're sharing the load and a lot of times when we put in a retrievable redirect it's a shared load and so i thought five ace that'll be good it's not really heavy but what if you want to set a line for a primary load uh you want to use a, main, a regular block you don't want the friction of the rings and so having a three quarter or seven ace and that that 12 strand you know stuffs up in a bag real nice it's real flexible it's hollow braid and so he tied a knot on that and the knot stops at the rings and now he can pull the rings down and we pull that out it deploys with the butt end first so we stuff those rings into a bag first so the rings are on the bottom of the bag and then that that end is in the top of the bag so you pull that end up first and then you pull that end down last. And uh, our, our chafe sleeve now is really sewn down really nicely. So gamingtrees.com, you can get one of those if you want one. We've got to go do some DC, Mike. DC, you know what DC is? Damage control. Damage control. We, uh, we, uh, I don't know that we actually ding the roof. I think part of the roof was our ding, but at any rate, we're gonna replace a bunch of sheets on this tin roof on a shed that was near one of our removals. And so it's a beautiful day for a job like that. And uh, in this case, uh, a hunting shack that we have is gonna get the, uh, the, that tin roofing. <laughs> or metal roofing like there's nothing really wrong with the metal roofing just a couple of dings and so uh we're gonna repurpose that on a hunting shack that only has asphalt on it now so we're gonna upgrade game of trees we always have fun like and subscribe we'll see you next time